Hi everyone and welcome to our activities page. Today I have a very special guest um, and he is from the local search and rescue volunteer team and we have been talking a lot lately about how to keep our kids safe if they get lost because we have our new book out in the search for Sammy. So I wanted to ask um, Darren to come on and talk to us a little bit more about how to keep our kids safe um, and maybe some tips um, to share with us on how to teach our kids not to be scared if they get lost and what to do. So Darren, do you want to introduce yourself? Good morning, Gina. Good morning. My name is Darren, I'm a local search and rescue volunteer like you mentioned. Been doing it for about nine years and loving it as much as the day I started. Well, fabulous. We love having volunteers that love doing their jobs. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do is just ask you to share some tips with our parents about maybe like the top three things that we could teach our kids to do if they get lost. How do they stay safe if they are lost either in a, in a park or in their neighborhood or if they're camping? Do you have any ideas for them? Uh, you know, it really depends on which medium you're talking about, you know, parks, yeah. versus the neighborhood versus out in the wilderness and camping. Right. Um, first thing I would say is just have a good situational awareness. I know those are some big words, but just talking with the kids, you know, telling them where they're at, you know, how you get there, kind of talking through the whole experience right. and letting them know when you get somewhere, what, what type of resources might be there? You know, are there park rangers? Did we just pass a ranger station mm -hmm. or potentially if you're going into a, an amusement park, you know, right. where's the entrance, maybe where's a meeting place, you know, if you mm -hmm. get lost, you know, the hardest thing for us to do as volunteers is searching is finding somebody who's moving. It was continually getting further away potentially. So right. if they're able to, you know, have an idea of where they're at, um, to stay put, who are appropriate people to talk to, mm -hmm. ask for help. Um, right, right. One of the benefits I see from the book you wrote, thank you for sending me a copy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're just letting people know that, uh, you know, we're in orange, we're wearing a whole bunch of gear. We could be scary. Right. But we're here to help. Um, right. So when we're calling out for people, for kids, it's important that they're able to feel safe to call back to us that we're there to help them. Right, yeah. right. We we spend so much time teaching our kids not to talk to strangers, but in certain situations, there are good people there to help. And if they're lost, to look for the orange um, or to look for somebody that works at the site. Um, and I always I like to tell parents that kids remember things that they're familiar with. So if you're lost in the amusement park, what is one thing that your child will remember if they're scared? Do will they remember like at Disneyland, the the merry-go-round? Will they remember Cinderella's castle? Will they remember Mickey Mouse? Or something that it will come to them really quickly and that they can actually say out loud if a search and rescue volunteer asks where their mommy is and they could say a Mickey Mouse, then we can we can start to have a kind of a starting point. So when they're lost kind of in the woods, I know that we kind of talked about camping and hiking and that's what the story, the, the search for Sammy's kind of in that camping mode. Are there certain things that we could do as parents? Um, if our kids are lost, what are some helpful things that we could do for you guys? Well, first of all, like I said, I, I touched on one point the first time, just having a good idea where they are, who they can ask for help. Mm -hmm. But two, as a parent, to uh, you know, make it a habit of taking a new picture. You know, we love to take pictures with our smartphones, but it's an invaluable tool, um, you know, to see what little Johnny or Jack or Jill was wearing before they got lost. So mm -hmm. clothing type, um, even potentially their shoes, you know, make it a game. Um, right. Make a print in the ground with the shoe that's really discernible and, Mm -hmm. Snap a photo um, yeah. when we're out, out looking for somebody in a park or a camping area. Uh, we need to be able to discern between tracks. 
So if we can see this size four shoe and we know that's the one we're looking for, it'll help us uh, find them quicker. Right. So right. that are, would be a good tip. Pitcher, um, shoes, yeah. so we can have the information we need. And mm -hmm. then I would say um, just making sure you take the right supplies with you. They're just basic things that you can take, um, a proper clothing for the environment and layers. Um, that could be a whole nother interview if you want to do uh, layers and clothes. Yeah. Um, but just something appropriate for the weather. Think ahead. Um, okay. Like Sammy did in the book I saw, whistle. That's always yeah. a call for distress. Um, mm -hmm. So I carry a whistle, not to look for somebody, not for me to whistle, but for somebody who's lost a call back. Okay. Um, so it's always a sign of distress. So whistle is great. And just something to keep you dry if it's a wet environment, even if that's a trash bag that's light and tiny, you can pack with you. Mm -hmm. They're all good tips. Just have what you need for that environment. Maybe a little backpack with water. Yeah. Um, be prepared. Yeah. So Physically so and emotionally. Don't like wearing wearing backpacks or clothes, especially our two and three-year-olds, but maybe having a very special backpack that we always wear when we go out camping or hiking and putting those special things. So snacks, we know that they'll eat a favorite jacket, maybe a little backpack with Mickey Mouse on it or cars or something that they'll want to wear. So that or, if for some reason they are lost, they will have that with them. Or a fanny pack. Or a fanny pack. Style. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, make it enjoyable, something they like. You know, that favorite yeah. snack in there, so they will want to take it. So right. That's a great idea in my my viewpoint. Yes. And and water. We know that water is really important. And I know you had talked about a trash bag, possibly for if it's wet. So trash bag, it's cheap, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. cost much. Packs up really small. Um you can use it, keep the rain off of you. A lot of different usages. Mm -hmm. Um ground cover, keep you warm if you need. Um, that's something you'd want to teach ahead of time, right. how to wear it safely. Um, right. But it's the same idea as a space bank blanket that costs a little bit more. Okay. Um, but trash bag will do the job. Right. And they can pick up trash too with it too. Yes, which is a great idea. Help um, our environment. So, and then the last thing I know I wanted to ask you, so from when parents have kids that are lost, we know that's a very emotional time. Um, and they're frantic and they're worried. Do you have any tips for parents on how they should respond as soon as they realize that their kids are are lost? Well, that, that's a hard one because it's a really emotional time. Um, so it's really being cognizant of what you're feeling, recognizing that, um, and having the ability to give us a good idea. A, call for help first. The yeah. sooner we're on scene and we're able to um, start, the more positive the outcome will be. Mm -hmm. um, if you search for an hour, two hours before calling anybody, that time keeps elapsing of how far they could be wandering away if they're not staying put. Right. Um, so it can be embarrassing. Don't want people to feel like that. That right. help is there. That's what we. That's what we do. That's why we volunteer. Um, so call early. Right. And give us a good picture of what we're looking for. And just be honest. If, you know, we look for a lot of children, maybe cognitive issues. Mm -hmm. We know that ahead of time. There are techniques, there are places, attractants that we can go to first to hope have a positive outcome. So okay. be calm as possible. Call for help. And any positive information of direction um, that we have would be great. And you keep talking about, you know, how kids, if kids wander and they have the opportunity to wander, that makes it harder and harder for them to be found because we're not sure where they're going and what direction they're going in. And, and that's sort of why we wrote the story, The Search for Sammy, was to teach kids to stay in one spot so that they can be found quickly and easily. And so I have, I will pull up, I have the... Um, book here. Here's a snapshot of um, Sammy. He's He just got done playing fetch and he got lost. He doesn't know where his mom is. Um, and he 
he crossed that red line up there that mommy said, don't cross. And he's remembering that. Um, and he says, but mommy told me that if I get lost, I should stay by one tree. If this one looks good, it's as tall as can be. So he's remembering that he needs to stay in one spot. And we use a tree because you can find a tree really anywhere. You can find one at camping. You can find one in your neighborhood. You can find one in an amusement park. Um, and so I know that that's a big deal for you um, to keep the kids staying in one spot. And then as we go along, um, we have Sammy with the whistle. And let me let me jump in there real quick on the yeah. tree. Yeah, it's just a, it, it's a big spot. Mm -hmm. they, but the tree also provides cover for them um, right. and a shelter um, if they get lost or it's raining. So it provides multiple things for them. <laughs> Right. And, and yeah, we were right. And so, um, finding one and staying there and sitting next to it is, is an easy thing for kids to remember what to do when they see that. Um, and then we did talk about the whistle and here's Sammy found the whistle he remembered to wear and he's telling all of his, um, little animal friends to cover their ears. The sound will be loud, but it will help them be found. Um, and it'll tell mommy where he is and also where the search team is, because that's what you had already said. You're looking and listening for the whistle. So getting kids to whistle. Um, the next and part. One thing I'll point out there, too, if yeah. you'll go back one slide. Sure. Or page. In yeah. This case, is that picking the right tree does make a difference. Um, okay. So children, adults, teens, doesn't matter. You want to stay put, but you also want to pick that tree somewhere where it, there's a clearing or somewhere where it's open if you're in a densely mm -hmm. vegetated area because there will be resources coming to find you. Okay. Um, so the bigger you can make yourself, you know, that trash bag or having a jacket makes you look really big to a helicopter, especially right. if you can get if you can hear that coming and you can go from your tree out to that field out there. Right. Then somebody can really see you. Definitely. And throw one more piece on that. You, if you're thinking about, if you're looking down at somebody, mm -hmm. if you're standing, if you're just standing and waving your arms. You make a little, like a little picture for them to see. But if you were to lay on the ground and make a snow angel, uh -huh. now your profile is really big. Right. And that'll help you be seen easier. And, and, and color. Clothes, right? Yep. Yeah. So wearing bright clothes, if you're going out to an amusement park or out in the woods, something where you can be spotted pretty easily. You wear camo in the woods if you don't want to be seen, but if you want to be found and having a good time, you wear something yeah. bright. Right. Definitely. Um, and we had talked about, oh, um, uh, following your footsteps. And your shoes, I know you had talked about that a little bit earlier, um, how taking a picture of the kids' shoes so you can measure their feet and know what footprints you're actually looking for could be helpful. Um, and here in the book, we have a search team over here. They're in their, their orange gear. They've got their, their vest. And I know you have a bunch of things in your, in your chest harness um, that could be helpful. Uh, for searching, but that is what most search and rescue volunteers tend to wear this outfit. So kids know um, that they are looking for them. And also you have this, the, the search dogs. Um, and I know that there are some volunteer search dogs that are out there also on the teams. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And they're tracking dogs and what they're doing is following their footprints and using their flashlights, even if it's dark. Um, so there, they're there. And then here, I yell across the forest trees, thank you so much for finding me. So since he's already been talking to his mom about the search and rescue team, so find you, he's not scared um, that they're coming at him. Some people that he's never seen before and a dog, um, he's actually responding to them. So I think that that is so important. Um to remember to tell kids and, and explain what the search and rescue people could be wearing, what they could look like. Maybe they have a doggy with them. 
Um, but yeah, so that is the purpose of this book. Yeah. Um, and, and let me jump on that real quick. Yeah. So yeah, you know, our local team's probably 70% wear orange, but mm -hmm. it could be any number of bright colors. Okay. Could be blue, could be red, neon. You know, typically you're going to have some sort of insignia for the local. They're all sheriff's department volunteers for the most part. Okay. So the official identification. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're going to look official. It just may be a different color than orange. So that's good to know. Right. Right. So that is great to know. So something where if the, they're looking for you and if they know your name, right, are there some, maybe is there like a code word that the parents can have with their kids that that they know that these are people that they, they are looking for and that they are safe people? That That's a great tip. Um, you know, I had never thought of that. Thanks for bringing that tidbit. Um, yeah, definitely. If you had some sort of code word you pre-planned or thought about ahead of time yeah. that we could have our search teams using if, you know, we find somebody or calling out, mm -hmm. you know, that would be a way to identify that we're there to help. Right. And so I know we touched a little bit on you being a volunteer and most of the search and rescue teams in the United States, right, are volunteers. It's mandated that every sheriff's department has a search and rescue team. So we're okay. all volunteers. Um, yeah. And we're governed by a nonprofit. Yes. Person for our local team. Mm -hmm. uh, to provide all of our own gear and equipment to, um, facilitate the need of the community. Perfect. And so what uh, what we did was to thank all these volunteers is, and to teach our kids how to stay safe is I work in partnership with the local search team. We've created the search for Sammy to teach kids in a child friendly way how to stay safe, to find a spot, to use a whistle, to know that these searchers are safe, but also 50% uh, of all the profits are gonna go to the local search team um, volunteers to fund essential resources. And I know you guys go through thousands of hours of trainings. You buy your own gear. Are there certain gear, like what kinds of stuff do you usually need donation for? Well, that, that's a great question. And we, we thank you for um, providing this opportunity for us to fundraise during these yeah. hard times with COVID and um, everything else going on. We're unable to do any fundraisers right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mass gatherings, um, right. but our need continues. So we continue to order, order radios, GPSs, um, just the tools it takes to allow us to do our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and broadening upon that, I can tell you I'm a member of a specialty team where we do, um, we have drones to help um, find people quicker, have a more positive uh, outcome. So, you know, resources to be able to do that are key um, for finding more people. And they're not cheap. So definitely not cheap. having some, some fundraising opportunities is really important. So um, this book, you can find it, and I'll put a link below for anyone that's looking. Um, you can find it on my website. You can find it on Amazon, no matter where you buy it. 50% forever, as long as they're sold, will be going to search teams for all these essential um, materials and essential equipment. So is there any, I know there's a couple people on, if you guys have questions, go ahead and pop in. I see Lily said, how awesome, thank you. You're welcome. I hope this helps you um, and your family with some tips. I don't know, Darren, do you have any follow-up um, comments or anything you want to mm -hmm. say before we sign off? No, just want to thank, thank you for providing this. Um, you know, all these efforts and kids learning to read the book are helpful for us to do our jobs. Um, yeah. So knowledge is key. Um, so I just thank you for getting the message out. You're um, very helping our community in your way. You're very welcome. And so here's a um, what the book looks like in print. And um, it is available. It's now on the page, um, on the website and on Amazon. So I'll link those on there. Um, it's very cute. The illustrator did a great job. Jay and I Publishing, she's fabulous. 
Uh, and aren't there some tips in the back I saw as well? What was that? And aren't there some tips in the back I saw as well? There we are. So at the end of the story, um, there's this, oh, there's a page of special search tips. And then there's also a bunch of games that I made um, playful games with Sammy, such as Sammy Hide and Seek, the Sammy Dance, um, Sammy's phone number, um, and the Tracking Sammy's Path. So they're all ways to teach our kids um, how to find a tree and stay there in a playful way so that they will remember. Because if kids are lost, we already know that they're scared. So the more that they practice this, the more that they're familiar with what to do, um, the more likely they are going to find that tree and stay there and have a positive outcome if the search team can look for them to find them. And if you think a cute dog like is going to come find them, yes, you know, that's something to make you be less scared. So yeah. like my search dog yeah. here, they're, at home, <laughs> they're resting they're and they're ready to come find you. <laughs> um. And so about the dogs, the dogs, when they come to see the kids, they are well-trained, right? And they are um, calm. And do you, are there different types of dogs that are surf dogs? We use all types of dogs. Um, okay. Depends on if they're trailing dogs or if they're searching for a large area for somebody. Um, uh -huh. So trained in different ways and yeah. many different types of breeds. You can find anything from your typical um, German Shepherd to your Golden Retriever, Lap, whatever it may be, um, they're they're trained. They're probably going to lick you all over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're there to help you and find you. Yeah. So that's something else important too. If you do have a child that's afraid of animals or afraid of dogs, to have that conversation with them about a search dog and how they're not going to hurt you. They're there to help. You. So that's a good tip. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing all this, Darren. I appreciate it. And thank you for thank volunteering you and to your team for volunteering. Thank you. Bye. Bye.